Ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. This is our Christmas YouTube giveaway. All of you that entered, your names were put into an online random generator and one was picked at random and presented to Jake, the winner of this lovely Bluetooth DVS speaker and data bank to charge your phone on the go. Lovely prize is York Smart Homes. Congratulations, this prize will be on its way to you later today. All that remains to be said is for all of you that supported us and followed us through 2019, thank you ever so much. We look forward to working with you in 2020. The festive period is nearly upon us. Please, please, please take lots of rest. Enjoy the time with your family and friends and look out for those who are not as fortunate as ourselves. Welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and you may have wondered what I'm wearing. So we've partnered up with On The Job for a collaboration. So if you guys like collaborations like Supreme versus Timberland, you're gonna love this. DVS, Delivering Vision, On The Job Workwear, get involved, On The Job, collaboration with DVS, get involved, it's all about the dress code. So what we're gonna look at today is the new Hype Vision dual lens people counting camera. So it's an internal and external version. So you can see on the box, external, internal. Today we're gonna to look at the external version. So in the box itself, you get a mounting back plate. So you fit this to the ceiling. It's a top down view for accuracy. So you fit that to the ceiling. This then is the new dual lens people counting camera. It's the external version. It's also in color. So those of you that wanted a color people counting camera, your prayers have been answered. The cable comes out of the middle instead of the side. It used to come out with the side there. So you've got the locating locking screw there. So this bracket, simply push all these connectors through like so. This bracket then sits in there, locks in there, and then you do the screw tight in there. So it's nice and easy to remove and install. Like I said, dual lens, no SD card slot. This is the external version. It's got an internal flash memory. So we're gonna fit it in place of the older style one. So those of you that don't know, uh, that is the older style one. And you can see what I mean with the cable coming out the side. Still a highly accurate, very, very good piece of equipment. Um, that's in black and white. This is the new color version. So I'm gonna quickly fit that. We're gonna web browse into it and see what the setup's like. So stay tuned, we'll be back in two seconds. Cheers guys. Hello and welcome back to the how-to video. As you can see, the camera's fitted. Um, web browse into it. All I've done is done the OSD text, so I knew which camera I was web browsing, so I've got two of them next to each other. Um, it's fitted above my demonstration room door, so it's nice and easy to test. As you'll notice, when I web browse into it, it has a new menu called VCA, which I'll go into shortly. Firstly, I'll go into configuration. Bear with me. Bear with, as they say. So that is the part number of the new dual lens color cap color people counting camera and that is the latest firmware as of today please remember this is a brand new product firmware will probably be released to improve it adjust it ex the experience etc so just make sure you are on the latest firmware at time of installation but the video should still apply so same standard web browser format under system service you've got ir light and then the enable emmc protection there you go. Um, let me save that. Um, security, user management, network, etc., etc. All I've done for this, because the camera is a self-autonomous device and we can actually email reports out, what I have done, I've gone into um, the email function. I've set up the email ready to send to me once I've set the people counting up. Other than that, it's 1080p, 25 frames a second, HU65, all of the other menus are standard, turn motion off, and I've just done the OSD, so I know which one, like I said earlier. So you can see this is now a color image and not a black and white image like it was before. The new menu on the web browser at the top is the VCA menu. Now if I click on that, that's where we do the setup for said camera. So we're looking at doing people counting as a resource, that's the default one, so I've 
already selected, so I click people counting. You have to calibrate the camera. It's suggested that we use the auto mode, but you can manually calibrate it. The manual calibration is suggested if the floor space here is under 25% of the image. The image here, the floor space is about 70%, so we're okay to use the auto method, and it's as simple as this. Select auto, this green calibration box, drag it to flat level ground, sort of in the middle of the image, dead center under the camera if possible. It's suggested that it's, um, depends on the installation environment of course, but that if it's like all of the same color, um, flooring, that's probably going to calibrate it much more easily. We can manually calibrate it if we need, but if I place it there and click calibrate, it should come back succeed. If it, it may fail and come back, and we just have to adjust that box. So it's come back as calibrated. If it does fail, just move the box around slightly, make it smaller or larger, and then it should calibrate. If you're getting troubles, use manual and past that. Please contact either DVS here if you bought the product through us or through Hike Vision or the distribution channel that you purchased it from. So we've calibrated it now. Next, we have to draw a region. So the red box here is our count area. So on the right hand side is the legend. We don't currently have a count area enabled. So using the auto method, it says the lens height is about 2.98 centimeters, which it is just under three centimeter ceiling tilt angle and the heel angle 0%. So that's right. What we're gonna do now is draw the region within our count area. So draw a region. We're gonna draw this blue count region here to here to here to here and then right click. So we've got region one enabled. Okay, next thing, we're gonna draw a line. So you've got two options. You can do area A or region A to region B. So how this works, you can actually tell it. So if a, a counter line doesn't work, you can actually draw an area. So the person or people have to travel from region A to region B to be counted. Or what most people will use is the count line. So if I draw a line, put this where I want it to count, and we're just gonna put it across the doorway for demonstration purposes sort of here, so the door will open and people will walk in, so that's about right. And we're gonna put the direction as in, you can change the direction doing that, so most people are gonna use the line, but you can do region from region A to region B as a count, and then you tell it which way round that is. Click save, save succeeded. We're now going to enable people counting as the function, and click save. Gonna do a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery there and it'll settle down. So, stop doing that, so that's fine. What we're gonna do now, arm in schedule, 24 seven by default, linkage method noted by surveillance center. We've also got a new option called reverse counting alarm. We're not gonna use that today. Um, I'll explain that a little bit later on. Shield region when it loads, you can draw a region which doesn't count any objects in it. If you feel the need, you have to mask an area off so it doesn't form part of the count area, you use the shield region to do so. Next option is data uploading. So real-time upload data, you can turn to on and then you can adjust the time period there. So if I wanted it to one minute and click save, save succeeded. The minimum is one minute, the maximum is 60 minutes. So this is the real time upload data and how quickly it does that. Or the data, sorry, the data statistic cycle is how quickly the data is refreshed within the camera. The real time upload data is where it's uploaded in real time. Next type is data type, data type report. So daily, weekly, monthly, or annual. Where I set my email up earlier, this is where by email I'll get a daily report, a weekly report, a monthly report, or an annual report. Now I may want a daily report for test purposes. So we'll untick the rest of them, but every an annum, we're gonna leave that tick. So every year from now I'll get a report to show everyone who came in and out of this room. And you can select the report type, Excel, CSV, text, or XML. So we'll do Excel and CSV and click save. Save succeeded. Overlay and capture. So display VCA info on stream, yes. Display target info on alarm picture and display rule on alarm picture. 
background uh, well, picture quality is high. This is more for integration and how we send the images to our system or to a third party. But it's to go through the menus to make you familiar with them. So the flow overflow is enter, leave. You can have enter or leave or none. So we're going to leave as enter, leave. Counting type is all. So you can have adult or child. We'll have as all. And daily reset time is midnight. If your shop needs a different reset time, so the count goes to zero, you can actually daily reset time. You can select what time to suit the shop or the installation environment that you're fitting it in. Or you can click manual reset to reset that manually. Once you're done on there, click save. The next menu down is advanced. Really, this is where you need to get some professional help either from us or from Hike Vision Technical. This is where you can adjust the parameters to suit the installation. So you've got enable height filter. So that'll, you can discount people under a certain height. If you're looking for a certain demographic of heights, for instance, by unticking that, um, by ticking it, it will sort of not count anyone under 1.2 meters. I'm gonna tick, untick that because I wanna count everyone under at any height, but you can enable a height filter so to start eliminating um, characteristics, uh, in, for want of a better term, to fit better with the application you're using. I'm gonna turn that off. Enable counting children, so you can have that on or off. Target detection type is detect based on depth mainly and tracking algorithm secondly that's the default option we're going to leave that as it is and then you've got all these algorithm validities false alarm filtering judge times enable pattern counting filtering etc 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 clear the storage export all of the settings and then maintenance mode we're going to leave that pretty much default other than turning the height filter off so i don't want to discount anyone at a certain height um, I'm going to click save, but you can set that. If you start messing with that, it could really affect the performance of the product. It's probably best that you get some inside help with that. If you click on the help menu there, it tries to help you through this, um, how to do the calibration, etc. So you can always refer to this if needed on the online help. So close that down. So we're pretty much set up on that now. If I go back to rule, Pretty much shut up, wait for it to load, there we go. So it's counted nobody yet. So I'm gonna click on live view. Now I'm gonna try and get a load of people to walk in and out of this so it gives us some data to look at. So give me two minutes and I will be back. Okay, as you can see there, we've had 14 people in and 14 people out. That's a very tired Dave doing that. I counted it, it was very, very accurate. I tried to trick it, it couldn't trick it. It was highly, highly accurate, so really pleased with the performance. What I'm gonna do now is go into the application tab at the top. I'm actually use the camera itself to show a daily report, but I can do weekly, monthly, or annual. I can do people entered, people exited, or all from today and click counting. And now I can do it by 30 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, so you get a, a nice little table, or I can just do a bar chart or a line chart. So it shows you really clearly how many people came in. If I hover over that, it says, People entered 14, people exited 14. And that would give that to you over the time period of a day. If I selected it over a week, for instance, and click search, it'll do it per day. Um, so it's really useful to do. And what it will also do is email me out that report. I can also pull it through IMS 4200, or I can actually do it via the uh, NVR itself. So a couple of ways of doing this. Because you're not really going to want to web browse into the camera or give the customer the ability to web browse in it and use this reporting. You are going to want to set it up for the uh, export via email so they get it automatically. They don't have to do anything. They'll be really thankful to you. Um, but you can do it for the web browser should you use or Hike Central, IMS4200 or the NVR interface. So next little quick thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to send the time and date to one minute to midnight. Hopefully at midnight that will then change. Send me the email so I can show you that quickly. So bear with. Okay, as you can see, I tricked the camera. I have the two report types attached. One is a CSV, so I can open that as a CSV format or just press preview and it's just number text, or I can open it as a proper XLS document. Open that up, open that up, and there you go, 14 and 14. There we go, so there is the statistics from the email function. Hopefully you enjoyed that, any questions, please ask. Always make sure you're on the latest firmware, and again, 
have a really, really good time with this. See you soon for the next how-to video. Cheers, guys. Bye.